Good morning, everyone. Good morning to all of you. Good morning. Come on in the room. Come on in the room. Come in the room. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in this day. Good morning to all of you. That's right. Come on in the room. Let me know that you are here. Let me know that you plan to be a participator in the Word of God, not just a spectator. Good morning to all of you. Come on in the room. Come in the room. This is Friday. Thank God for Friday. Good morning to all of you. Come in the room. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and magnify his holy name for he is great. He is greatly to be praised. He is greatly to be honored and adored. Good morning to all of you. Good morning to all of you. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Donna. Good morning to you, Sister Nancy. Good morning to all of you. Come on in the room. Good morning. Good morning. Come on in the room. Good morning to you, Sister Tyree. God bless all of you. Good morning to all of you. Listen, the Lord is great. The Lord is greatly to be praised. He is greatly to be honored and adored. Good morning to you, Sister Sharice, all the way from California. Sister Lula, good morning to you. Good morning to all of you. Listen, I'm going to go before the Lord in prayer. And then I'm going to get right into what the Lord has for us. Father God, we just thank you. We thank you, Lord God, for who you are. And we thank you, Lord God, for continuing to shower us, Lord God, with your love, God, for continuing to protect us, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, for continuing to heal us, oh God, and God, for everything that you do, God, on our behalf. Lord, we thank you, Lord. We are grateful for it, Lord God. We don't take anything for granted, oh God, because you didn't have to do what you do. God, you don't have to heal us, Lord God. You don't have to bless us, God. You don't have to raise us up, oh God. You don't have to do any of the things, God, that you do that show us, God, how marvelous and powerful you are in the earth realm, God. But not only that, God, you know that you rule, God, the heavens and the earth, oh Lord God. You continue, God, to show yourself strong and mighty for the people of God. And Lord, I just thank you, Lord, for how you bless us, God, for how, God, you continue to let us know that you are God and you are powerful. Lord God, you are the Alpha, you are the Omega, Lord God, you are the beginning and the ending, oh God. And I thank you, Lord, for how you continue, God, to show the enemy, God, you, you continue to put him in his place. And I thank you, Lord God, and that is behind us. That is under our feet. He is under our feet. And I thank you, Lord God, for what it is that you do, God, in our lives. And let us know that how powerful and victorious we are over all things. We are victorious, Lord God, over sin. God, because we can tame this flesh, Lord God. God, with your power and with your word, we thank you for it in the mighty name of Jesus. So, Lord, for these brand new mercies, yes, that you give us this morning, God. These brand new compassions, Lord, that you give us, God. We thank you for those, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that great is your faithfulness toward us. And we praise you for it in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, Lord, take this word. Lord, allow it to do what it is that you have set it out to do, Lord. For it will accomplish, Lord, those things that you have set it to do in the mighty name of Jesus. We do pray, Lord. We know that we'll fall on good ground. We thank you that it will be engrafted to the hearts and the minds of the people of God, that they may be a changed people. In Jesus' mighty name, we do pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning to everybody. Sister Mary, good morning. God bless you, Brother Otis. So good to see all of you this morning on this brisk Friday morning. Um, uh, it is a great day. It is a great day to be a part of the kingdom of God. It is a great day, listen, to let the Lord know how much you love him as we continue to just meditate with him and continue to allow him to plant seeds in our life that we will grow up to be mighty mature men and women of God. It's a great day to see how the Lord is developing the people of God. But listen, as I was preparing to, to do this particular meditation, because what we're saying here is if we ever needed the Lord before, we sure do need him now. And for many of you um, in this region here in the South Bend, Michiana region, when you woke up on Wednesday, you woke up and you saw the newspaper just like I did. And I mentioned it perhaps on, on Tuesday night um, as I kind of got a, a, a heads up about it. But I mentioned that the health department was closing down or, or closing down churches. And so as I looked at the newspaper on Wednesday, what the, the headline read, front page, it said, faith centers urged to go viral. And then the next, you know, the subtopic was they're asked to stop in person due to clusters of COVID-19. So the St. Joe County Health of officials are asking churches or faith centers to end, to stop in-person worship and move to virtual centers um, through March, 2021. And as um, my husband and I were, were speaking about that, as we were sharing about that, and I've been talking to many people about that, I said, now is not the time. Now is not the time for us to, stay, to back away from our churches because what we find, and then you have to you have to think about it, people of God. 
We have to think about maybe what happened last time when, when the churches were shut down and, and the churches were closed and, and people listen, even though we know that the church is in our heart. Somebody needs to say that. The church is in my heart. The church lives in me. The Lord Jesus Christ, he lives inside of me. So it should not matter at all that the, that the brick and mortar is closed. It shouldn't matter to the people of God that the brick and mortar are closed. But listen, we need to be real with this thing. And if the people of God, if those who are mature walking in the word of God, y'all stay with me this morning. But for those who are mature that are walking in the word of God, and you know that the spirit of God works in you and lives inside of you, and that the spirit of God dwells inside of you, it doesn't matter Listen, if you worship in a sanctuary. It doesn't matter if you worship in a cathedral. It doesn't matter if you worship, listen, at McDonald's. It doesn't matter if you're worshiping in, my God, the bathroom of your home. It doesn't make any difference to you. But for those, my God, who maybe are mm, are teeter-tottering be between goodness and, and, and evil, for those, my God, who perhaps are babes in Christ, for those maybe who are still on the milk of the word, as Peter talked about, as those maybe who are not yet, my God, eating the meat of the word of God, for those, my God, who perhaps may be swayed, tossed with every wind of doctrine. Come on in here, somebody. For those maybe that may hear a word from somewhere else and may be swayed from the things of God. For those because the world has gone upside down. For those because there is civil unrest. For those of us because there are things that are happening in the world today. For those because, my God, there are situations that have turned us, my God, some of us away from the Lord because we don't think that the Lord is in this. For some of us because maybe we think that the Lord is in this and now we think, my God, because he is so uh, powerful that he has done this awful thing to us and now we don't trust the Lord to bring us out of this. For there are those, my God, who maybe don't have the church in their heart, Sister Lula, and when that brick and mortar is not there, they do not trust, my God, enough to continue to believe that God will do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that works inside of us. Sister Lula, maybe there are some that don't have that power, my God, working inside of them because they don't know the word that God has placed in their spirit. Listen, this morning I'm saying, if ever we needed the Lord, if there was ever a time we needed the Lord, we sure do need him now. So hear what I'm saying, people of God. It isn't about the brick and mortar, but it wasn't about the brick and mortar back then. But we saw, my God, that people of God left when the church is closed, they use that as an excuse to leave, my God, the houses, the assemblies of God. They used it as an opportunity to leave from, yes, yeah, somebody just said it, Tyree, from forsaking themselves together. And what is it that the Bible talks to us about, about forsaking ourselves together? When we come together, my God, as one, we can come together to support one another. We can come together to be with one another. We can come together, my God, to help one another. Because using the gifts and talents and skills, the ministries that the Lord has given to us, the, the, the gifts that we may build up the body of Christ. When we are not coming together, the gifts that we have, listen, many of those gifts will go dormant. And just like in Matthew 25, if we're not using those gifts and they've gone dormant, then the Lord says, I will take those gifts away from you. How many people do we know? How many people? Maybe it is you. Maybe because we were not in the houses of God. And maybe for some of us, we never even went back to church. Maybe for some of us, our church has never opened since they were closed last time in the summer before. And so we've never gone back to church. So the gifts that the Lord has given to us, we had not used use them. And though we thought that we were still as, as anointed as we were before, the Lord's word is true. If you don't use my God and put that gift to great use, the Lord has said to you that I will take that gift from you and give it to somebody that will put it to good use. I will take that thing from you and give it to someone, uh, come on, who will use it, who will plant it and who will get a return from the investment that I have put into their lives. Many of us are walking around, we're thinking and we're believing that we still have the gift, come on, of healing. But because you've not used that gift of healing, come on, it's not going to work for you because the Lord has already taken it from you and given it to the one, my God, who has placed themselves in a position where they can be used by God. Listen, Brother Otis, listen, there are many of us, I hear you, that we were waiting for an excuse. We were looking for an excuse, come on, come on, to, to leave the church. Because before Corona, before the pandemic, what was the excuse that we all used? We all talked about 
church hurt. We all said there was something that the pastor did, something that some sermon that the pastor preached, come on, across the pulpit that hurt our feelings, that caused us to leave the house of God. There was something somebody said that the first lady did, the way she looked at me, that caused me to leave the church. There was something that a brother or a sister did. Come on, we all made excuses, Brother Otis, to leave the church. We all made excuses to leave the place where God wanted us to be. We all made excuses. We said it was a brother or a sister. Maybe they stepped on my foot. Maybe there was, come on, we made an excuse. We said, I think she's looking at my husband the wrong way. He said, I think he, that she, he is looking at my wife the wrong way. We made excuses in the house of God. But do we make excuses at our place of employment? Come on, when somebody looks at you the wrong way, do you make an excuse and you say, I'm not going to work here anymore? No, you don't make that excuse. You go back, you get back up at 6 a.m. in the morning, you get yourself ready and you go back to your place of employment. But when something happens at the church, come on, you call it church hurt and you want to leave the house of God. You want to leave the place where the Lord is feeding you. You want to leave the place where the Lord is giving you the energy to go to your place of work. Come on, you want to leave that place, my God, where the man or the woman of God is giving you the tools, my God, to do what it is that you are trying to do. I'm telling you, Brother Otis, yes, we get all in our feelings, but it's not about our feelings. Come on, it is about your faith. It is about your faith to know that God can do whatever it is that he says that he can do. But yes, I thank you, Brother Otis, for helping me preach this thing this morning because we we do, we look for excuses. And now, you know, you've not heard about my, uh, come on, we've not heard about church hurt over the last eight months. We haven't heard about church hurt, but what we've heard about, my God, is the pandemic. And so we've used that as a reason to leave the house of God. But we've used it as a reason not only to leave the house of God, but we've used it as a reason to leave God, to leave the relationship of God. We've said to God, we said, Lord, I don't need this relationship anymore. You're not doing anything for me anymore. Many of us have said, Lord, what have you done for me lately? You said, Lord, I'm going to go to my other boyfriend, the one, my God, I'm going to my sugar daddy, the one who is now feeding me, the one who is now doing something for me because you don't see that God is still, no matter what is happening in our lives, the Lord is still working things out on your behalf. But let me tell you this morning, this is not the time to be cho closing churches. This is not the time. In this time where the world, I'm telling you, there are things that are happening. And even yesterday when I saw it, or two days ago when I saw it, the governor of Texas, for those of you who are living in Texas, the governor of Texas, in the, in the most blatant form of voter suppression, has removed the places where you can return your early voting, your early ballots, and only have one location in every county where there are millions of people and you have to drive hour, an hour to get to the location. So no matter how young you are, no matter how old you are, no matter how feeble you are, if you want to early vote, for some people you have to drive an hour to get to the place to drop off your early ballot. And those are things, listen, that are happening all over the world. And as we talk about voting, listen, it doesn't mean, you know, I don't know if the Republicans are going to vote. I don't know if the Democrats are going to come out to, to vote. But people of God, you better get yourselves up and you better get out and you better vote. So whether it's early voting or voting in person, make your way to do it. Vote. Vote. It is our right. It is your responsibility. Don't allow anybody to take that right from you. Listen, if we ever needed the Lord before. We sure do need him now. This is not the time to leave the church. This is not the time to leave the place where God is. This is not the time to leave the protection of God. I got some scriptures for you, but I just want to know, listen, there, this is a time of stress. Where, where do you go? Where do you go when you're feeling stressed? Many, listen, are trying to hold on the stimulus. We're trying to hold on what the government is going to do for us. And we're, 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 we're banking on that. We're, we're trusting in what the government is doing. But listen, the Bible even tells us we can't trust in government. We have to put our faith. We got to commit our ways unto the Lord. And the Bible says he will bring things to pass. What is that thing he will bring to pass? Come on, he will bring our health to pass. He will bring our righteousness to pass. All the things that we need, the Lord says, I already have them. This is not the time. If we ever needed the Lord before... We need the Lord now. Listen, back in the days of our forefathers, I think about often, listen, even in, in my lifetime, 
I think about it often. When I was raised, listen, with a family of 12, I was raised with a family of 10 children in my home. I recall, listen, the time in my home, we had one bathroom and my mother, she was such a great administrator. She was able to, to handle and to manage. Good morning to you, Sister Nosha. She was able to manage this, those 10 children in that house with one bathroom and three bedrooms. We managed it well. She was able to feed us all every time. Now, listen, we may have eaten in shifts at breakfast, but I tell you, at dinner time, we all ate together. She managed it. But I look at us now, and when we prayed. We were a family that prayed together. But I look at now, how many, listen, even, even my family, how now everybody may even have their own bathroom. And there's still issues. We complain about everything. Even now, come on, people of God. We can't even live and live together in the same house without bickering and fighting and complaining. Listen, if we ever knew the Lord before, we sure do need him now. Many of us, listen, there are things that are happening in our lives and, and you thought it was bad back then. You thought, listen, in days of depression and recession and times, listen, where there was little money in your pockets, but you made it. You made it and you made it with the Lord. But look at now and you're saying, listen, now we got great jobs. You're living in fine homes and your bathroom is inside of your house. But we're still, listen, got issues going on. And it's hard times we feel like. But listen, if you need the Lord before, listen, you need him now. You need him now more than ever. There's a scripture in the word of God. Listen, I'm going to do a couple of things. But I just looked at a, a prayer that David prayed in Psalms 16 and 1. One through four. And as I was thinking about this, I was thinking about that song, Jesus be a fence all around me every day because we need protection. We, we need his protection. It's, and David was saying in Psalms chapter 16, verse number one, he says, keep me safe, my God, for I take refuge in you. He says, he says, I said to the Lord, for you are my Lord. And apart from you, I have no good thing. He says, I say of the holy people who are in the land, they are noble in my sight, is all my delight. David here is saying, Lord, I take refuge in you. He says, there are things that are happening all around me. Come on, somebody better testify this morning. I see you, Sister Tyree, been through the storm, been through the rain, but we made it. But listen, if there was ever a time that we needed the Lord, listen, we don't need to leave him now. We need him now. David here is saying, Lord, I, you are my refuge. You are my strength. He's saying, Lord, I don't have nobody to go to but you. He's saying, Lord, I turn to you. Lord, I need you, God, because I don't have no other hope. David here is saying, Lord, I refuse to go to anybody else. He says, David is saying, Lord, I refuse to leave you for another God. Because we know that the Lord is jealous. We know that he is. But we're saying, in all of this, Lord God, I'm going to find my security. I'm, David is saying, I'm going to find my peace. I'm going to find my identity, Lord, who I am. Yes, say, say it, Sister Donna. You all better testify this morning. Come on, because I need you, Lord. Lord, and I need you right now. If there was ever a time that we needed the Lord, Lord, we sure, Lord, we need you right now. Lord, there is nobody else, come on, that I'm going to go to because, Lord, I need you right now. And as I get to this main scripture that I want to talk about, it's found in Isaiah. I only got a few minutes to do it because I'm feeling something right now. Because the thing about it is we allow others to sabotage, listen, the thing that God is trying to do in our lives. And then we listen to that. We listen to what the enemy is trying to do. We listen to the tricks of the enemy. We listen. We allow those things to swirl around in our mind. And then we allow them, come on, to get us off focus from where God would have for us to be. And as I've said often, the Lord has not changed his mind about you. The Lord is all powerful. The Lord is omniscient. He knows everything. The Lord, listen, he was the beginning from the ending. The Lord is I'm the present. He is everywhere at the same time. Listen, so that means the Lord knows what is happening right here with every last one of us. So don't you know, my God, if the plans that he has for you are to bring you to success, not to destroy you, to bring you to an expected end. Don't you know the Lord has all of this in control? But listen, just because somebody tells you, come on, don't, for, come on, 
don't assemble. Don't assemble with your brothers and sisters. You better get creative about it this morning. Somebody better get creative about getting with your brothers and sisters. Don't you know that the Lord will protect you? I see David saying, Lord, protect me. Protect me from the things that would harm me. Protect me from my enemy. Protect me from the things that are around about me, trying to get me off, away from you, Lord God. We need a deeper relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ so that when he come on, when he comes on the scene and shows up, he will manifest his great power for all of us. Isaiah, in Isaiah 64, come on, he was praying to God for help. Somebody just need to cry out to the Lord for help this morning. Lord, we need you because if there was ever a time in our lives, Lord, that we needed you, Lord, this is the time. This is the time, oh God, that we need you. We need you now. So Isaiah is saying, Lord, that you would rend me, then rend the heavens. Tear open the heavens, God. Lord, something is happening down here in the atmosphere. Lord, something is happening on the earth realm, oh God, that we need you, Lord God. So, Lord, I need you, God. And this is Isaiah's prayer. He's saying that you would tear open the heavens, Lord, and that you would come down. Listen, Isaiah is not saying, Lord, send help. Isaiah said, I need help so much, God, that I need you to come down, Lord, in person. I need I need you, Lord, to come on and hear somebody. Isaiah is saying, listen, there's so much mess going on around me. He said, the enemy, come on, has whipped me all upside my head. There are things that are happening, Lord, that I don't even understand. Things that are going on, God, in our relationships that we don't understand. We've got brokenness all around us, God. We've got poverty all around us. Lord, we got misunderstandings all around us. Oh, God. Lord, Isaiah is saying, Lord, that you got to break open the heavens and, and Lord, come down and see about your children. See about your people, oh, God, because it appears that the enemy is having his way down here in the earth realm. We know that he isn't, but Isaiah is saying to the Lord, it appears like things have gone awry. It appears like things have gotten all messed up, Lord. It appears like your people have stopped praising you. It appears that, oh God, your people have stopped giving you glory. It appears that, oh God, the people have begun to listen to others other than you. It appears that, oh God, the people have begun to get fearful of the things, my God, that might hurt them, Lord God, but let them understand, Lord, that you have not given them the spirit of fear, but you've given them power and you've given them love. And Lord, you've given them a sound mind, Lord God, to do the things that is necessary, Lord, that they not will not fall or succumb to the thing that is trying to destroy them, oh God. We know, oh God, that there is something out there, but I thank you, Lord God, that you've given us, you've given us instruction for how to keep ourselves safe. Isaiah went on to say, Lord, that you would come down. Hey, oh my God, I never see, hey, Isaiah said, come on down, come on down. He said that you would Jesus, he said that the, that the mountains might shake, that the mountains might shake in your presence. Isaiah is saying, I need you, Lord. He said, we need you. He said, if I, if I did, he said, if I never needed you before, God, I need you now. He said, I need you to show up. That the mountains might shake at your presence. He said, I, I need a manifestation of your power right now, Lord. Isaiah said, as fire burns brushwood, as fire causes water to boil, to make your name, your name known to your adversaries, that the nations may tremble at your presence. He said, listen, I need you to let the devil know who you are. I, I need you, my God, to let the enemy know who's in charge. Come on, we need you, Lord. I need you to tear open the heavens. Come on down here. Come on, let Satan know, come on, that he's messed with the wrong ones. That, come on, that he's, come on, try to shut down the church when we know that you've already said that the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Listen, the enemy has already tried to mess with the very elect of God. He's tried to get into the minds of the pastors, of the bishops, of the evangelists. He's tried to shut the mouths of the people of God who are the very mouthpieces for you. He's tried to come on to shut them down. But listen, I need you to come down here. Isaiah is saying, my God, to make your face known to make your presence known, to make your power known. Lord, if there was ever a time that we needed you, come on, we need you to show up now. Isaiah is saying, when you did awesome things for which we did not look, come on, you came down. Isaiah said, listen, you did some stuff before. He said, when the stuff was happening, when we needed you, come on, you came down. Come on, you came down, my God, for Elijah. You came down, my God, when Jezebel was trying to get him. You came down, come on, my God, when the three Hebrew boys were in the fire 
fiery furnace. It came down for Daniel in the lion's den. Lord, you, you came down. The Bible says in Isaiah, come on, that, that you came down and, and the mountain shook at your presence. It says, from the beginning of the world, men have not heard nor perceived by ear, nor has I seen any God besides you. We're talking about the goodness of God. Lord, you can do this thing. Who acts for the one who waits for him. You meet him who rejoices and does righteousness. Lord, we need you now. We need you now, oh God. Come on down here, Lord God, and show your power, Lord God, to this world who doesn't understand, Lord, that you are still in the blessing business. You are still, Lord God, in the miracle working business. You are still, Lord God, doing great things and mighty things in our lives, oh God. We understand that sin will separate us from you. Sin infects us. Sin is like an infectious disease. My God, sin is like a cancer. But I thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for sending the Lord, for sending Jesus, my God, on the cross, that we could be forgiven of all those things, oh God. Thank you for sending him, because Isaiah, come on, just like we are right now, we're crying out to God. He wants God to visit the earth and show, my God, his power, show his magnificence, show his awesomeness, my God, so that everybody around will recognize exactly who God is, and no one, my God, will have the audacity to to say that churches need to be shut down because even them, even those that don't know God, even the listen, even those that worship somebody else, some other God, they will come to know that not only do churches not need to be shut down, but every last one of them need to be open because revival needs to take place. My God, it is revival time, people. It is not time for the churches to shut down. It is time for them to open up, my God. It is time, my God, as they open up that the Lord will make a grand entrance, oh my God, because there are many my God, who have walked away, who have turned their backs, my God. There are many, my God, because Isaiah understands and he understood that God is everywhere. Listen, he didn't have to come down, but Isaiah was trying to express how much he needed God. He knew that God didn't have to come down, but he was just expressing, listen, God, we need you. We need you now. And listen, if you can just show, my God, yourself, show your power, show your glory, show your magnificence. I'm telling you, there will be nobody on the face of the earth that will say you don't need to be here. Somebody is saying that the Lord does not need to be here. My God, but I'm telling you this morning, not only does the Lord need to be here, oh my God, the Lord need, will take over. Come on, he's already, listen, but he needs to take over inside of you. Allow him to take over, my God, glory to the Lord Jesus Christ. He needs to take over inside of you. People of God, this is not the time to take down. This is not the time to step aside. This is not the time to lose your faith. This is your time, come on, to meet the Lord when he tears open the heaven. It is your time to meet God, my God, right where he is. Come on, you've seen him. You've been close to God. You've had your faith to believe that God will do it, and you know he'll do it. He's done it once, he'll do it again. But I'm telling you this morning, my God, this is, if, this, if we've ever needed the Lord, if we've ever needed the Lord before, Prophet Ivy, if we've never needed the Lord before, we sure do need him now. We've got to put that confidence in the Lord Jesus Christ that whatever we ask the Lord for, my God, we will do it. Just like Isaiah. Isaiah asked the Lord for something because he knew that he could do it. He knew, my God, that he was needing it. Isaiah was in interceding on the behalf of the people who may not have known God or who turned their backs on God. Listen, or who didn't think that God was as powerful as he was. Listen, we need to do the same. We need to intercede on behalf of those who maybe have turned their backs on God, who maybe have lost a loved one during this pandemic, this coronavirus out outbreak. Maybe we need to intercede on behalf of our bosses, on, on our friends, on our neighbors, on our family members, on those who are yet in our houses that do not know the Lord. Listen, we need to get ourselves in a position that, listen, it... it the church is in us. Be the church. Somebody needs to be the church. Get rid of everything that stands in the way of your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ because every last one of you have a gift that the Lord has given to you. And I'm telling you this morning, you're walking around empty because you are not exercising that gift. You are not using that thing. Listen, but I'm telling you, all you got to do is just ask the Lord, come on, give me another. Oh, come on. Come on, give me a refill. Refill me right now with the power. Refill me with the presence that I may be able to do what you call for me to do, oh God. And then, my God, when I'm interceding for 
for others. Come on, as I intercede, as I do more, as I intercede for others, as I exercise those gifts, it's just like, come on in here, somebody. It's just like when your battery run down in your car. Come on here, somebody. It's just like when your battery runs down in your car. Hmm. When you charge a battery up, when it's initially charged up, you only get enough charge, come on, to start the car so that you can go. But as you drive, come on, don't you know you see the charge gets better and better. Come on, the, the charge on the battery gets increases more and more as you drive the car. As you drive the car, come on, the farther you get, you'll see the battery. Come on, the charge of the battery gets higher and higher. Come on, come on. When you exercise your gifts, people of God, it's just like that. Come on, when you come back to the Lord, you say, Lord, please anoint me, oh God, anew. Refresh me, God, anew. Revive me, oh God, anew. Because, Lord, if I ever need you before I sure do need you now if the church ever needed you before Lord we sure do need you now Lord forgive us for pulling you out of the thing that you established forgive us oh Lord God for taking ourselves out of the thing that you established oh God my God Lord and then you were fried when you revive me when you refresh me when you refill me oh Lord God I will not God allow that thing to go dormant but I will use it oh God I will use my gift God of discernment I will use my gift of the word of knowledge I will use my gift of prophecy, oh God. I will use my gift of healing, oh God. I will use my gift, oh God, of faith. I will use my gifts, Lord God, of administration. I will use my gift of evangelism, Lord God. I will use my gift, my God, to lay hands on the sick, Lord, and they shall recover in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. Lord, this is the time that we need you, oh God. We need you, Lord God, to show up. We need you, Lord God, to show up, Lord, because there's something that's happening in the earth realm, oh Lord God, that is seems like the people have turned their back but I thank you oh Lord God that you God will come into the presence of the people Lord God and Lord you will let us know that God, you have worked this thing out on our behalf and for our good I thank you Heavenly Father I thank you Lord Jesus right now this morning for this word oh Lord God of revival I thank you this word for this word of refining and I thank you for this word my God of refreshing and renewal oh Lord God that we will come to understand Lord God that this is not the time to back away this is not the time Lord God to take down. This is not the time, Lord God, to think that we can do this thing on our own. But we praise you, oh God, for you have continued to bless us. You have continued to hold, hold us and heal us, oh God. This is not the time, Lord, for us to begin to believe what the enemy has said about us. When we trust God in you, we trust you, oh God. We trust you, God, because you love us and you need us, oh God. We trust you, Lord Jesus, for who you are. I thank you, Lord God, that you came and you sent Jesus on the cross to die, Lord, and take our place. And I thank you, Lord, for that resurrection power that raised Jesus from the dead. We now have that same power, oh God. That power means, oh God, that the sin that we have in our lives, oh God, that we can remove that sin. That sin can be removed, Lord, that we can enter into your presence, oh God, and have the confidence that we need, Lord God, that when we ask anything according to your will, Lord God, you will hear us. And when you hear us, oh God, that we have the petitions that we have set, God, before you. We thank you, Lord God, that we are being refined in your presence. We are being refined in the spirit, oh God. Just like oh God, potter's God, the, 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 the mound of clay. Lord God, you are refining us. You are perfecting us and you are shaping us, God, to be the person that you call for us to be. And I thank you, Lord God, that even in this hour, we shall call on your name, oh God. Just like David did, God, in this hour, we shall let you know, God, how much we need you. In this hour, oh God. God, if you just tear open the heavens, come down, God. Manifest your great this. Show God, the, oh my God, the world, how powerful you are. I thank you, oh Lord God. That shall be our prayer. Lord God, that you, God, shall do great and marvelous exploits, oh God, we, but for the people of God, but not only for the people of God, for those, God, who don't yet know you, God. God, they will, God, come to know you and to love you in a special way. And then, God, I thank you, God, for all the things that you will do on our behalf. Thank you, Lord God, for continuing to protect us. Thank you for being our hedge of protection. Thank you for being our fence, oh God. Thank Thank you for being a refuge, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we do pray and I thank you. I bless you, Lord. Somebody say amen. My God, this is not the time, church. It's time, my God, to get closer, closer to the Lord. It's time. We got work to do, people of God. We've got work to do. Come on, it's Giving Friday. It is Giving Friday. Hallelujah. We've got work to do. I love you all so much for the love of Jesus. You have a wonderful weekend. I got a couple of announcements. Glory to God. 
Glory to God. You see on my Facebook post, we're going to be doing an event for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. I want you all to, to mark your calendars for that event. Log on to that event. We've got some wonderful information for how to save your life, how to save your natural life, women, men alike. Early detection of breast cancer is a lifesaver. Please mark your calendars for Saturday, October 25th. Mark your calendars for that day. Log on and be a part of that event with us. I love you all so much with the love of Jesus. You begin to praise God. Go in peace.